Hi everyone, welcome to tonight's live stream. My name's Emma, I'm from the AIE Canberra campus and tonight we have Alex here who studied our design course and Matt who is from our Adelaide campus and they're going to go through Alex's journey through AIE and what he's been up to. He is a recent grad from 2020 who studied on the Sydney campus so I'll let them take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Emma. And thank you so much, Alex, for being here with us tonight. Um, just a quick reminder to all our viewers out there as well. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. Um, but if you have any questions for Alex or myself throughout tonight's live stream, do go ahead and pop your questions in chat and we'll uh, definitely do our best to get them answered. But uh, I do like challenging uh, our guests in terms of throwing some hard questions. So uh, Think of some and uh, let's uh, give Alex a, a bit of a try. So uh, awesome. So thank you so much for joining, Alex. No problem. Thanks for having me. That's all right. Um, let's jump straight into it. We've only got 30 minutes. It's not a huge amount of time, but in saying that, we can get through a lot. Uh, I definitely want to start now. This one here, it's a new question. It's a new year. Um, I've always wanted to ask people this when they come on. Um, what is your favorite video game? <laughs> and uh, that, why? That's a, Sorry, and why? Oh, and why? Oh, and why? All right. Uh, that's a tough one. Probably uh, a game called War of the Monsters that came out on the PS2. Uh, and you basically just play giant robots and monsters. It's like an arena brawler, and you just go around kind of beating the crap out of each other and knocking down buildings <laughs> and all, all that stuff. Uh, it's probably my favorite. I love arena brawlers and like punching stuff in games so getting to play giant monsters and just kind of throw each other around is uh it's pretty awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice uh and uh, i heard you use the term arena brawler there um I, I have a feeling we're going to be talking about that in a little <laughs> while as well um as i possibly see that your major project might be inspired by your favorite game <laughs> but uh we will get to that so um uh, next question I do have for you is, uh, did you grow up playing video games? Is that where I guess this line and this journey began for you? Uh, yeah, uh, my parents like to say that I, I was in front of the computer at like three playing games. <laughs> um, probably my earliest memories though is uh, getting the like original Xbox the day it came out and playing like Fusion Frenzy, just a party game and like Halo. Uh, after two weeks when my dad was like, ah, it's fine, kids can play it. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you an Xbox over PlayStation person? Uh, I, was, I was Xbox for a while, and then later in life, I transitioned now on PlayStation uh, okay. and PC. Okay. That's kind of my, my two. <laughs> let, let us know in chat, do we have majority Halo, uh, majority PlayStation or majority Xbox viewers out there? Let us know. <laughs> um, uh, awesome. So, um, then you, so you definitely started off enjoying games, playing games, um, but then I guess moving towards, uh, as Emma said, you are a graduate of AIE, so you've clearly come in and studied how to make video games. So, um, my next question for you then is, how did you get into the line of making games rather than just playing them? Um, Dungeons and Dragons, honestly. Uh, I, a few years ago, started playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons with some friends. We moved over from Magic the Gathering, and uh, I, I was a player at first, and it was like the best thing I'd ever played. Um, and then I started running the games, um, when that's where you, like, you write the story, you write the encounters, you like, run, the, run the combats, you're kind of making the rules as well as you go. Um, yeah. And then you're like sharing that with people and then they experience that and you get their it's like palpable their experiences at the table and you can really feel when you've done a good job and um that was uh that was awesome i, I love running dungeons and dragons and um i worked in real estate before this uh and really didn't like it really wasn't for me um and i just i got to the point where i was like oh man all i want to do is is run dungeons and dragons or work on dungeons and dragons <laughs> like stories um and then i just like happened to find out about uh, game design is a thing, apparently. Um, <laughs> I just heard someone mention they were a game designer, and I was like, what is that? And I Googled it, and I was like, that's what I've always wanted to do. <laughs> and always. I didn't know this was a job. Um, and then I like, quit my job like immediately. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then started, uh, started the course um, like the year, uh, a couple months later, because um, it timed out lucky, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, so Dungeons and Dragons kind of got me here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Do you play D&D um, &D with any of the uh, students that you went through with? 
Um, I have not, not for lack of trying. Um, yeah. I, at the moment, I've got a couple that I did my major project with that I'm, uh, I'm about to try to get them playing in some games. So uh, we'll yeah. see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've uh, just started playing D&D probably for the first time this year, and my first character got killed by an eyeball. He got one shot. Oh, it'll so. happen. <laughs> it was... You'll never forget it. You'll never forget <laughs> yeah, it. No. <laughs> uh, so I created someone a little bit more tankier for the second time around. <laughs> that's good. I recommend um, Paladins. They're, they're my favorite. Yeah, they're yeah that's what Big I'm damage. Playing, so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, you've already explained this one a little bit, but um, I do want to dive a bit more deeper into your decision to do game design um, at AIA rather than game programming or game art, co- uh, game art course. Like what caught your attention to the design and what was the final reason you were like, yep, this is the pathway for me? Um, I think it was kind of uh, the design, what, what you do in design is kind of what always, like when growing up was like, oh, that's the kind of stuff I wanted to do. And um, I used to watch a lot of like the making of, um, yeah. make behind the scenes, like Halo 2, because it came with like the special edition. Um, and you like, see their offices and how they make it. And you see the guys work on the art models and stuff. And, and I, I would look at that and be like, that's amazing. I can't do that. That's way too hard. Um, yeah. And then programming, it's like a lot of, a lot of numbers and, and letters, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. which is like amazing that people get can do that um, and like working with programmers and then it's they make things they just make it work. Um, those were those were never. I, I super like those um, yeah. and like love love watching them and and, um, and having them like see them in action and stuff. But for me, I was like, there's never. I don't think I get my brain to go in that one direction. Um, the whole time, I like to work on, uh, like, do lots of lots of different things, um, and I like to have. Yeah. I'm very much of a, a more of a broad idea, um, kind of guy. So I like to. I always thought that I would want to be in the position where I'm like, here's here's the thing we're making, and then they would kind of. I would have people who would make that for me, and then I found out that's yeah. kind of a, a job well, not with with me, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I get I get what you mean. Yeah, awesome. Um, so what then? When you first applied to AIA, what was in your portfolio? So, um, uh, what experience, I guess, did you have? Yeah, I, so I had um, I had never really touched a game engine before. I think I went to the open day and then was recommended try Unity and just do like their rollerball tutorial, just so you know what you're kind of getting into. Um, and I was like, I did that like the day before and just made like a little level in like half an hour. And that, that was that was all my game engine experience. I actually came in with a ton of. Dungeons and Dragons stuff. I had just yeah. like little car like uh, items I'd drawn up and colored and like written out, and I just had like a book full of like all the stuff I'd worked on it, like maps and encounters. And I just kind of talked through some of the scenarios I made and like why I had designed them that way and, and run them. I think I was, yeah. I think I was in there for like way longer than you're supposed to be. Just just uh, <laughs> <laughs> just could not stop talking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, that's that's good. what. Yeah, that's what we want in portfolios in interviews. Like, uh, um, I send out emails to the new students who are coming in for them, and at the end, it's like one of my favorite sentences, which is like, "This isn't as such a, like a, a professional meeting. Like, it's more of a get to know your chat. So we want to experience. We want to hear about like, especially D and D players, like <laughs> what they're up to, <laughs> what they've created. It's a lot of fun for us as well. So, <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, okay, so. Then you you did get into the advanced diploma, so you're accepted. Fantastic. Um, during your time at AIA, do you want to go into a little bit of a, a, or about your experience here, studying with us, first year, second year, what it was like, teamwork, teachers, all that jazz. Um, yeah, I had uh, I had an amazing time at um, at AIA, and I, I recommend it to to everyone I talk to. Um, I've had some some friends who were like fringe interested, and I've been trying to. I'm like, oh, it's it's amazing. <laughs> um, I I personally had a, just a really good experience. Um, first year was a lot of uh, learning the tools, and you, you make it. Um, I, I made some stuff. Not not my best work, obviously. Uh, <laughs> like first time getting the engine, but I like you get to do a bit of the. I got to do some art. Um, I got to do some programming, which really reaffirmed that I like them, but um, not don't want to yeah. do that <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's good to know. Um, and yeah, and then at the end of the end of the year, you work in like a big group with like artists and programmers. It's my first experience there, kind of working with other people on a thing. That was amazing. And then um, second year really felt like where it, uh, where it all came together. Like um, all all the, the games that have shown up so far, all were made in in my second year, and I'm. Uh, I don't think I made something that I like wasn't immensely proud of and just wouldn't oh, show, show to anyone. I was, I'm really, really happy with everything I made in second year. 
Um, you made you make a lot of. I made a lot of projects. <laughs> yeah, here. yeah. Um, but yeah, got to got to do like lots of different um, parts of design. So uh, this one uh, on the screen at the moment is was made for the VR unit. So I had uh, all I had was the phone because I was uh, studying remote at the time. Um, so just Google Cardboard, which is obviously just you look around, and you just have like one button, and um, uh, this one I turned out really well. At the time, I was like. Oh, I'm a really bad designer. I'm, I'm trash. I'm no good. Everything I do is sucks. And then I got to the end of this project. The whole, the whole, like I think it was three, three weeks for this one, three to five weeks. Yeah. And then I got to the end of it, and then it, it came out, and um, I played it, and I showed some people, and I was like, oh, actually, this is this is kind of good. I really like this. <laughs> but that so, whole so time, the, oh, yeah, sorry. You just yeah. I, that's <laughs> probably the one thing I've noticed the most here is we've got such a, an incredible amount of talent and. Um, gifted students who create these wonderful pieces of art but I've always noticed they are their by far their harshest critics like and I understand that like when you're creating something you have in your head a way that it wants to uh, be shown or um, but I'm blown away by some of the artworks here it's just students and they're just like oh it's okay you know <laughs> like, oh, oh, like yeah, they, this is great oh, so many talented <laughs> people <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah I definitely worked with a lot of very very talented people um, very fortunate um, a lot of good artists. That's why all, all the games look. I think they look very pretty. <laughs> yeah, no, they do. Uh, they do. Very cool. Yeah. So um, the Arena Brawler. All right. So let's get back to this one here. So it was your favorite yes, game, yep. an Arena Brawler <laughs> style game. Um, then yep. during your second year, um, students uh, get together and work in a group project, um, a major project, if you will, major production. Um, so when you're working with programmers, you're working with artists, um, and you guys chose to and girls uh, chose to create a game called Throw Thyself. I believe. Um, so, if yep. and we can see uh, a few images uh, and characters on screen here. So, do you want to let the audience know a little bit about Throw Thyself and what that experience was like creating that game? Uh, Throw Thyself is a 2.5D arena brawler where you play as gods from different myths and you literally throw yourself at each other um, and try to take each other out in one mighty blow, um, <laughs> which is pretty much <laughs> what's happening there. Um, this this is. But personally, my favorite thing I've ever made, um, pro possibly because it got the most time. Um, but it's very much it's very much a me game, uh, like it's very mythology. Like I've got some a, pe a Pegasus and Icarus and some Greek. Myth I'm very into Greek mythology. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, yeah. So it was very very much like I was very happy we got to make this. Uh, but this this was honestly like so the best. This was the really felt like the apex of AI, of my AI, AI time. Um, this was like, I had looked forward to the major projects every year. I just, the whole year was like, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, yeah. And then we got here and it was so much fun making it. I, I enjoyed it so thoroughly. Um, <laughs> the, the team I had was great. Um, everyone was super into it. Um, the biggest issue I had with the game is I would I would leave to go talk to like a teacher or someone else, and I come back and everyone's like sitting there playing the game and they're not they're not working on the game. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? We got to finish it. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so, it was so much fun. Have. Yeah, it was. It, it could have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> could have been worse. But yeah, I just I love playing it and I, I still want to work on it just because I want more content for me so I can I yeah. can play it and I couldn't wait to share it with with people. But um, it was, yeah, it was such a fun experience and um just capped off like the whole two yeah. years to your study. So you as a game designer, um, for the viewers out there who know nothing about this, what is your role? So let, let's take through thyself as a pure example. What was your role from start to finish in this uh, in the game development stage? Okay, um, so from start to finish, it was my, my focus was on player experience is how I like to think of game design is um, I kind of come up with the systems and the kind of the mechanics and uh, and the aesthetic uh, and everything just to kind of get a desired player experience. Um, so you, you base that on, you build your persona and, and you get your core pillars of the game and then you kind of build everything around uh, that desired player experience. So I came up, I, I was coming up with the kind of the throwing mechanic, um, kind of the aesthetic to kind of get the, the correct feel across uh, that I wanted the player to have. Um, and kind of the way you, the way it all feels. So it's very much um, all the, the the player experience was kind of my every every design was like kind of based around that. Yeah. So I'd, there is some story in there, but you don't get to see it because I, I think we had sixteen weeks uh, total, yeah. which ends up being like eight weeks if, if you go five days. So it's it's not a lot of time. But there's no story in it. Yeah. But like I wrote story, which helps make 
uh, the artist do character design and like kind of gives the world a bit more cohesion. Um, yeah, and I just did the mechanics and and um, the like the levels. I made I made the levels and um, we kind of blocked all them out. And yeah, so it's just kind of like hands in a, a lot of a lot of jars there. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And uh, you did touch on this, and this is a bit of a personal question. I'm not going to lie. Uh, in terms of, for my own interest' sakes, did you, when you were doing the lore, did you do a lot of research into like the the Greek mythology, and uh, and I guess have a bit of fun with learning about Zeus and Thor, and I guess the yeah, I did. Of the olden time, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I did look into not as much as I I should have because I uh, I knew we weren't going to get any of that story in. Um, so I did a, a pretty surface level uh, look into a lot of them. Some I, some I already knew more about, like Zeus and Thor. Obviously, they're like they're so well known. Um, and yeah. then Ra, and then we have we have Ishel from uh, Mayan. She's a she's a Mayan goddess. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't know anything about her. I had to look into look into her. Uh, but it was really a lot just to kind of help uh, the character artist. Um, kind of build the, the character and the costume because um, it's really hard to just kind of give it to him and be like, just make a, make a, make a god. <laughs> how, how did you, um, it's a Mayan um, god. How did you explain uh, all these different gods from different realms coming together? Um, it doesn't come up, but my, my idea for it, and I realized after I, I wrote it, it that I, I basically just wrote Mortal Kombat light. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> <laughs> My idea was there was a kind of like a, a fifth uh, faction that was a collection of like the the dark god, or evil gods, or dark gods yeah. who were just kind of like there to kind of uh, the gods are very arrogant, very very full of themselves because they got all this power. So it's kind of pitting them against each other, and then the gods would these dark gods have like collected and joined forces. Um, yeah. They would come in, and then that that would be great. Uh, a great expansion to you'll see later because <laughs> I was like, what if though? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that doesn't turn up anywhere, but um, that's it's it's in here, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, awesome. I, I, look, I'm a sucker for mythology games. Like Age of Mythology is probably like the Age of Empires oh. expansion was probably one of my favorite games of all time. As the well. best one. So, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie when I say I have actually downloaded this game. <laughs> I haven't oh, just had you? the chance to, to play it yet. Yeah, I've downloaded it. <laughs> um, I, I love well. hearing that. I want everyone to play it. You can. <laughs> So it is local multiplayer uh, for two to four players. You can't play single player. Um, yeah. And it is only local, but there's a there's a program like called Parsec, which lets you kind of connect locally with one person hosting. So yeah. uh, you can play it. Like I've I've tried it out with some people from the group, and it worked really well on my internet. Yeah. Um, so definitely recommend. I I love people playing it. It's <laughs> yeah. I think it's so yeah. much fun. It's it, it's not perfect, but there's it's it's. It's fun. <laughs> if, if, if I need two people to play it, I don't think a teacher here at the Adelaide campus is going to be upset if I tell them, hey, I need you to come play this video game with me for a bit. So <laughs> that'll be fun. <laughs> um, awesome. So through the making of this, um, uh, I guess what in your, in your idea makes a successful uh, team during that major project? Um, pro probably the biggest one is by far uh, communication really is yeah. is kind of the big one um it's always making sure you've got all these open channels uh that everyone feels comfortable being able to raise issues or bring ideas to the table or just yeah. like communicate in general um is probably the biggest one and um and buy in would be the the next one uh so you want the like everyone in the team needs to be like hyped to make this thing um yeah. if you're if they're not into it then you're just not going to like put your best work in, and um, it it can it can show if you like work on something you just you're just not in it too. So I, at the start, like when you're generating the ideas and you're, and you're planning the game, it's really like make sure everyone can pitch their ideas for the game and make sure everyone's like this is going to be the best game ever. That's kind of yeah. the the level <laughs> the level that uh, I think really works. And um, it really really came through for um, for my team. We tons of communication. Um, everyone was able to. Or I hope everyone felt they were able to pitch in. They they certainly did. Yeah. Um. And everyone was really like really keen on the game, and they they really loved it, which uh, which helped because everyone just wanted to keep working on it and play it. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um. Their communication. I think when I first when you first said that, it just made a lot of sense in my head. I was like, that yes, absolutely. That uh. It solves a lot of problems. Like pretty, uh, yeah. 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 Um. And I'm gonna put you on the spot here. This for this one. What was your team's biggest hurdle and how did you overcome it that is that is a tough one we we actually had 
this is a, a terrible answer, but we we actually had like really like pretty smooth sailing uh, over through, which I I think chalks yeah. up to the communication. Um, yeah. So as soon as someone had an issue with what they were working on, um, like we were we we knew about it and we could kind of move on and um, and get rid of that. Um, we we did have a little bit of trouble with kind of misassigning tasks where um, some people uh, would like go, oh, I can do that, um, and then kind of start learning it and go, oh, this is way too much. I can't, I can't learn. I, by the time we'd fin finished, I'd have learned it. Um, yeah. So it was just kind of having to go, okay, let's, let's reassign some tasks and get, get these people doing it and these people doing it. Um, so that was, that was kind of the biggest issue is just kind of, kind of get, getting, uh, getting running with everyone kind of having their, what suits them best. Um, but communication yeah. really gets on top of that um, fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, so we, how, 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 oh, you go. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we, we it was um, yeah very helpful, and we we definitely avoided um, bigger headaches further down because we, we were able to communicate. We, we kept communicating with what we were struggling with. Um, yeah. yeah. How many um, how many were in your team? Out of curiosity, uh, there was six. There was myself um, and a yep. programmer and four artists. So it was um, yep. kind of figuring out the slide for the art for for myself and the programmer. Super easy to figure out tasks. You're just like. Programmers doing the programming, and then designers doing the design. <laughs> I, actually, I actually did the visual effects on this one because we didn't have anyone who knew how to do those. So I was like, I, yeah. I can learn that. I'm not, I'm not doing anything technical with it except for like building <laughs> yeah. levels. Uh, so I, I learned it. I was, I was super happy with how they came out. I, I, I was so happy with them. <laughs> uh, but then we had artists. So yeah, having four artists, it's really figuring out like who's going to do kind of what, what blocks, and yeah. then um, keeping that communication so they can go like, oh, I can help you do that because I can do it this fast, or I can do it this way, and then. Um, it's yeah. just really figuring out that pipeline, which communication helps with uh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, look, it looks like a very successful game. I am going to play it within the next probably week or two if I get a, a chance. If not, definitely uh, in the evening one time I'll uh, give it a try at home. Um, so uh, I will hold you to that. I will check. <laughs> you no, know, absolutely, dude. As I said, I'm a sucker for mythology games, so uh, I, I love them. Uh, so checking in then, you've now... Or, at the end of last year, you've graduated from the advanced diploma. Um, I can see that the major project went very well for you. That looks like a terrific game. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about life uh, past or once you'd graduated, because I do know that you've been a very successful man since then. <laughs> um, so uh, let's talk about the journey. Where did uh, where did you find yourself shortly after? Um, so I started at uh, Epiphany Games as a junior game designer. I think two days after my last day at, at AIE. Uh, which was very fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I had like a, a day that we had like a couple months of just like stress from the major. Like this is so important, and it was, it was so much fun, but so stressful. Uh, yeah. I was putting a lot of pressure on it to to succeed. And then I had like a day off, and then I was like straight into work. And now I'm like, oh, I've got to do well at this, this <laughs> at this job. And I'm like, I'm, it's fresh, um, but yeah, very very fortunate. So um, that, that I was able to do that, and then. Um, and then, yeah, I had my last week there last week. Um, and then next week, I actually start at Half Brick. I, I got a job at, um, at Half Brick, which I was very fortunate to be able to, uh, to do that. <laughs> Con congratulations um, on, on both you. of those jobs. They're, um, they're fantastic news to hear for any graduate who, who jumps straight into it. So at Epiphany, you are a um, junior games designer. And I believe at um, Half Brick, you'll be a junior games designer there. So have they told you about what you're going to be doing in that role? Um, from what I know, it's, uh, I kind of come in and we, I just start working on, on projects and kind of getting put where, uh, where I need to go. Uh, I think there's a, uh, kind of a probation period where I work with some other new hires and we kind of work on some things. We can see the whole process, half brick process. Um, so it kind of sounds like it's, it'll be similar to doing major where I'm, we're just kind of, we're making projects so we can see how the whole system functions and see if half bricks, you know, for us, um, so I'm, I'm very excited to to be able to go in yeah. and, and make stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. That was like the, yeah. the goal all along. So it sounds it sounds it sounds great. <laughs> oh, awesome! That makes me uh, really happy to hear that uh, you've. I guess like really, you decided to go away from real estate. You chased your dream, and then within 48 hours after finishing <laughs> your study, <laughs> you've you've you've, you've <laughs> yeah. <made> it. <laughs> it's been it's been a, a wild ride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay. Um. So let's talk about then. Uh. In the future. So you, you like obviously everything's gone 
amazingly for you so far and touch wood that it continues on in that fashion. But in your perfect world, in five to 10 years, outside of being retired uh, and filthy rich, or <laughs> um, what would you describe as your ideal uh, five to 10 year timeline look like? Um, that is that is hard. I tend to not think that <laughs> that far ahead. Yeah. Um, well, I, ideally, I'll be like making some very cool games uh, and I will be in charge of the games, <laughs> I guess. Um, I'll, be, I'll be like, you know, in leadership roles. Um, I really want to get to like creative director um, and I really want to be like making all of the, like these important decisions and um, kind of managing, um, like managing the game and like coming up with all the, you know, the, the, these core, the core systems and um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll be just, ideally making some really cool stuff that uh and i would have made some stuff that you've heard of and everyone everyone watching will have heard of uh that's that's my plan i yeah. want to <laughs> be known for making some really cool stuff <laughs> yeah oh, awesome is there a specific game that you want to create in terms of any ideas floating around in your head that you'd love to see come to fruition oh that's that's um uh, I, I don't really have i feel like i should but i've, I've never really had like a, a singular vision of I need to make this this one thing I just want to make really cool experiences um, I guess it would be uh, like spiritual successors to old like brawlers I used to play like yeah. War of the Monsters I'd love to do uh, a spiritual successor, a successor to War of the Monsters um, where it's like the, the combat's like even like meteor and like Ray more like like boom, boom, like really impactful. <laughs> and uh, I've got this vision of picking up a monster, picking up another monster and like throwing it through a building and the building like dynamically collapses and stuff. So that's that's yeah. probably like the dream game, uh, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like as you've made your first dream come true very, very quickly. So uh, hopefully <laughs> we'll see what uh, within, yeah, within five years or 48 hours, I could be playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, oh, Emma has joined us. Do we have a viewer question, Emma? Oh, uh, she. Oh, you've. Uh, you are muted, Emma. So, uh, classic sound. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Hello. Um. I. We don't have a viewer question, but I thought I'd just pop in and ask one of my own that I was wondering because you've had so much success after and for any current students who are watching at the moment. Is there any advice you'd give them for applying for those jobs after? Um. You did very well to get a job straight out of COVID. That is. Yeah. <laughs> hats off to you. So, is there any advice you'd give to current students? Oh, um, it would definitely be um, like get a, be be on good terms with your your teachers uh, would be a good one. Um, like really communicate with them a lot. Um, they're really uh, this was mentioned on my my first day, but they really are like your first industry connections. Um, yeah. And that, that's how I got the the job at Epiphany was um, they asked the school. They said, "Hey, do you have any recent design grads?" Um, and then uh, myself and and some other people were recommended um, because. Like, you know, I've communicated with the teachers. I, like, had proven my work ethic um, throughout the year. Um, and, like, the, you know, you can see the, the effort and, like, the quality of the, the projects I made. And, and the other one would be um, especially second year. First year was very much for me, like, learning kind of the processes at the end of the year, work, learning, working the team. Uh, but second year, like, every project uh, I worked on, I went, this has to be amazing, um, and I want this to be in my portfolio. Um, so really coming to the end of that year, having... Uh, some quality stuff in your portfolio uh, really, really can make a difference. Um, so yeah, really come like, don't treat it like a, like a kind of like high school or, or anything like that. It's like, this is everything you're making is going to get you a job is kind of the, the thought process I had, yeah. uh, which I, I think is why I had that. I was like, Oh, I'm such a bad designer. Like these, these are bad games. Cause I was like, this is so important to me that uh, these need to be great uh, or I'm not going to get hired. And, uh, so it's stressful, but uh, like it, it, it has paid off. So um, definitely, yeah. like treating treating these as like these are portfolio pieces, and you should be want to you want to be proud to show people. Be like this is this is mine, and I made this. Look at it, isn't it yeah. amazing? Tell me it's amazing. <laughs> uh, we did Putting just grab yeah, we did just grab a question at the end, but it's very similar to what we just said, saying did you apply for your role or was it more of a result of networking? So. Preempting questions. Oh, amazing time. <laughs> That's just I'm um, I'm on the the next level now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I will say the epiphany was that was I, I was recommended for that one, 
Um, but for Halfric was was an application process, and I, I was applying. Um, another one is apply everywhere and uh, never assume you've like gotten anything. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I applied for that one, and then some places will have series of tests, and it will be uh, like weeks, weeks and weeks to that you'll before you'll hear back if you got through the next stage. So it's it's a very stressful process, but you kind of have to apply everywhere because yeah. uh, it's it's fairly yeah. limited here. So you kind of have to jump on whatever. Every chance you get, and I, and I will say I wasn't just applying for design roles. I was also applying for like producer roles. I found um, and that's because I I, um, I I quite enjoy the producer aspect as well. Um, so it was definitely just applying a lot and just trying really hard. And and it's it's a lot of work. Uh, it, it is a lot of work. So, um, but it's kind of kind of got to do it. <laughs> yeah, and that does nothing. If you put in the work, it generally pays off. So. It's it's good to see our graduates already out in the industry. Um, <laughs> so awesome. Um, I will quickly just mention um, we have come to six o'clock, so we are at the end of the stream. I know time flies, um, <laughs> but thank you everyone who's uh, joined us so far. Alex, uh, I'm going to pass it to you very quickly uh, before Emma jumps in with some exciting news. But uh, is there any other bit of information that you would like to share with our viewers out there or um, potential students who are thinking about going into game design but not sure yet? Um, any bits of or pearls of wisdom from you? Um. Uh, do it. Would, I would say uh, it was it was amazing. I had, if like if nothing else, it was a really fun two years uh, where I learned a lot of uh, about you know about how games work and everything. Uh, and it would also be like don't um, like watch watch uh, like game breakdowns and um, behind the scenes stuff. I, I used to watch those just for fun, and then now it really pays off. Um, and run D and D. It's so helpful. <laughs> yeah. Like every all of my game design is just referencing to experience running Dungeons and Dragons. Run Dungeons and Dragons. It's it's amazing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> do it. yeah. We, the world can use some more D and D players for sure. Ab absolutely. There's no. There's never enough. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being with us tonight. We really do appreciate your time, and we are so happy to hear. Um, yeah, how, how well you've gone. And uh, we wish all the best for you um, at Half Brick. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of exciting games you're going to be working on um, and that we'll get to play as well. So um, now, Emma, is I believe you do have some news with upcoming AI events. Yes, so we've got some exciting stuff happening this year. So uh, if you go onto our website, you can always visit us at aie.edu.au. Uh, we have uh, one of our information evenings coming up. So you can go here. It's on March 18th, and that will be running online and at all of our campuses. Uh, so you can attend one of those there. Uh, and then we also have um, our next live stream, which will be going into uh, AR and VR with Connor, who is a graduate from AIE. So uh, we'll be going into the world of VR, which is also happening that same way, uh, week. Sorry, it's happening on March 10th. So just the week before our information evening. So then if you get really into VR from the next live stream, you can come and talk to AIE about how you can start your career in it too. So yeah. Awesome. So yes, VR, AR, it's a, uh, I want to say it's almost past an emerging industry, like it has arrived. Um, it offers a lot of opportunities and careers for students. Um, AI, we, us event officers, um, our friendly team here, we are absolutely and always happy to speak with students who are just wanting to know more information. So if you do want to get in contact, send an email, call us, carry a pigeon, don't mind. Just let us know. We are here to help you. So thank you uh, all for joining us tonight. Alex, thank you uh, again. And we wish everyone a happy night. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye. See you guys.